Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And this is going to be a pretty long video. We're going to get your popcorn. Get your popcorn. I, I think this one's going to go. I need my Prozac. It, <laughs> what? <laughs> you don't take Prozac. No, I don't, but I might need it after this. This one's going to go at least probably half an hour or so. We're going to talk about the utter state of the comic book industry and how comic book pros are seemingly destroying any platform they can't control. We're mm -hmm. going to talk about some developments with Kickstarter. Uh -huh. uh, we're going to talk about some developments with Gumroad, which for those of you who are not familiar, Gumroad is a platform that lets you sell digital downloads. Right. And they've been very popular with indie comics people for a while, but now crypto and NFTs. So mm -hmm. now it's not. Same with Kickstarter. That's we're going to talk about arrogance and hypocrisy too. We're going to talk about arrogance and hypocrisy. Yeah. So this is a very interesting situation. This is kind of a follow-up to uh, previous videos where we talked about, you know, uh, the comic book pros, salty comic book pros being angry that Kickstarter is going to blockchain. But I do not believe that is what the issue is, because as we will show you, there is hypocrisy in their alternatives, because a lot of the alternatives also use blockchain technology. Mm -hmm. What this is really about, OK, what this is really about is the fact that they cannot control the flow of spice mm -hmm. anymore. They certainly can control the flow of salt. Because there certainly is a lot of salt about a lot of uh, crowdfunding platforms using or entertaining the idea of uh, blockchain and NFT. But really, this is about the fact that their people are no longer in charge. Mm -hmm. uh, their people got ousted, basically, and they're looking to destroy Kickstarter. Oh, and it's also about opportunistic people. And one person in particular that every time any controversy shows up, they find a way to make it about themselves. We're going to talk, we're going to talk about them. We're going to talk about a lot of uh, other things here mm -hmm. in this very special, very special episode. So get your popcorn, kick back, and get prepare your, for an ass whooping. Your, get your alcohol, get your... I don't have any of that, but there's going to be an ass whooping. Some. All right. So anyway, before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over 256,000 subs. Uh, thank you so much for the support. We do talk about comics, talk about making comics. We do make our own comics. We've uh, worked in and around the comic book industry for decades. We've been around doing comics and watching crowdfunding of comics before Kickstarter and crowdfunding ever actually became a thing. Yeah, so we're going to talk about that. Now, I, I brought this up on clownfishtv.com because we've done many videos about Kickstarter, and we've been very critical of Kickstarter because of the gatekeeping. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that their move to blockchain personally, I think, is a good one because, as I understand it, they're going to effectively license out their technology so you can run your own crowdfunder using Kickstarter's engine on another website. Right, but you don't even need yet. There's plugins for WordPress. There's plugins, what was it, Shopify, Shopify has, one. has one. As we've been telling you for weeks, somebody who's taking credit didn't actually invent it. We've been telling you this for weeks and people have been doing it for years prior to Kickstarter even existing. Yeah, so we've been critical of Kickstarter for that reason. And uh, then, you know, of course, they hired uh, gatekeepers at Kickstarter mm -hmm. and they immediately unionized. And then when things got rough, uh, things got rough. They tossed these people overboard. Mm -hmm. But beyond... Whoops, you know, they just fell overboard. I don't know what happened. You know what happened. I sees it. And then they, then they <laughs> replaced them with uh, somebody shortly. And she uh, she only lasted a couple months, but she was immediately blocking people, I guess. On, oh, yeah. On I remember that. Yeah. And then she got gone. And then I believe they brought another one in that quit over the uh, the crypto NFT thing. Mm -hmm. Which is funny to me because literally about every payment processor you're going to use, any payment you're going to probably use to pay banking, credit cards, whatever to pay for these crowdfunders, even if you run it on your own site, tied to blockchain. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So this this is interesting. This is a, I, I believe this is a declaration of war. Uh, oh, that's a little dramatic. Well, I mean, no, to them it is. Like, they, oh yeah, because these people that they're like literally when when Brie Larson defending Brie Larson means that you fought in a war. They believe that this is a holy crusade, and look, they've already to one end just to, to control everything. Yes, that literally that's what this is about. I, I, I can't, can't control that people put on their own sites. 
No. So then you try to control the payment processors. You try to control, you know, and they had a nice system set up for a while. You know, they had Kickstarter set up and Kickstarter was bankrolling most of indie comics. And we had people in Kickstarter that would uh, keep certain people off the platform and they would have to go to the that, that dark area over there called Indiegogo. But what's funny to me about all this is as far as like, as far as crowdfunding goes, comics are like almost the bottom yeah. of what actually brings money into Kickstarter, Indiegogo, these platforms. Comics don't do jack shit in the overall scheme of things. They really, truly don't. They're not very big at all. And you compare it to other, you know, crowdfunders for like film or gaming, um, video games, tabletop, um, tech. They, they far eclipse. Like, they're dropping the bucket in comparison, but these people are so full of themselves over comics, crowdfunding, and it just, it's, it's hilarious. I'm king of the crap. Yeah, not that crowd comics are crap, but I'm just saying in the overall scheme of the the if you, in the pie chart of crowdfunding, that little tiny sliver is comics. Yeah, so I mean, is Kickstarter going? To, and this is the thing: Kickstarter has had so many issues because of comics. Um, the union was formed over a comic book. It was over what was it? Always punch Nazis, and they decided they wanted to be able to control what the platform uh, published. Yeah, because they were mad they got told they couldn't publish that when right. they when because the other books they they said they couldn't be published because yeah. they didn't meet criteria, it didn't meet the guidelines. Right. Even so, if you agree with it, it didn't meet it. And Kickstarter, after about a year, they found a way to get rid of the union. They used the uh, pandemic as a way to get rid of them, and then they replaced not replaced them with non-union workers who had the same mindset, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, now they're switching to blockchain, and the whole system is is being uh, question. Questioned, destroyed. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they again, they had a nice cushy system. It was like you were an indie indie comics creator. You went to Kickstarter. It was the approved platform. You got a little piece written up about your your indie crowdfunder on you know like comics beat and bleeding cool and all that. Unless and you hire PR people, which we're going to talk about that in a minute too. Yeah. Then you end up on things like Wired and Forbes and Polygon and all these places because you have your PR people out there with, for a fee, making sure you get put everywhere. Yeah, every, everywhere that actually matters because nobody really reads. Uh, Do they matter? No, these others don't matter either, honestly. No, no. So anyway, um, here we go. This I want to be very clear. Uh, we're not doing this to dunk on Spike Trotman per se. But we do have uh, kind of a history with her because we both came from the same scene. Mm -hmm. um, we all came from the webcomic scene. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know. We've been around a while. We've seen a lot of things. Yeah. So this is very uh, true to what we've seen from Spike in the past, where if there is some kind of controversy in comics, she immediately runs to the media mm -hmm. and uh, makes, it make about, sure about, make it about her. Makes it about herself. Mm -hmm. Yes. This has been this has been an ongoing thing. In fact, um, I am blocked by Spike on on uh, Twitter, and I forgot why. I'm like, I've never talked to her really directly, have I? And and you reminded me. No, I, I did. She, about seven or eight years ago, was ranting about Tokyo Pop coming Because everybody was mad about Tokyo Pop. Yeah. Because they didn't understand the contracts. We actually talked to people from the head contracts and um, got what happened directly from the people involved. And it wasn't to the extent that the people misunderstanding on Twitter were spinning it. You know, people who didn't understand business were complaining. But those that did understood that, hey, we got paid a shit ton of money. We never earned out. They're not just going to give it back to us unless we buy it back. It was in the contract. Yeah, Tokyo Pop was doing, uh, they were doing American manga, basically. They were hiring indie comics creators from back then, like DeviantArt and Twitter and whatever. And uh, they were giving him like twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars advances. They also would have a lawyer go over the contract yes. with them, and some people they even flew out to discuss yes. it with them. Like you fully, because the terms were that they would give you the advance, and just like any other book deal, you don't get anything else until you earn out. You basically sell enough copies of your book to pay back what they've given you in mm -hmm. anticipation of sales. And until then, they 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 You're retain dead. well they retain the rights to the to the property until it earns out or it's paid back. And people were angry because that was spelled out very clearly, but they wanted the rights to their their books back to take them elsewhere or whatever. And Tokyo Pop was like, "Yeah, you have to buy us out. Mm -hmm. You have to buy it." And people we, did. People did. Some people did. They're like, "Yeah, I'll pay the 25 Most of the people 30, that 000. had a business background that understood it Right. Did. That's, uh, you know, if you've got somebody investing in your company, you can't just like take the money and then, you know. So it became a huge controversy. Yeah. And of course, here she comes. Because <laughs> every time there's like, any comic controversy at all, especially involving uh, crowdfunding or things like that, she has to make sure it's about her. Always. 
So, yeah, so I, I guess I, because she was subtweeting she was about, us. about us. Yeah. And because uh, I said, hey, you know, Tokyo Pop, my understanding, I think we said, you know, our, our understanding with Tokyo Pop was that people were talking know, to people involved, made aware of what the deal was. They just didn't like the deal. And it was buyer's remorse. They signed a contract. They didn't fully understand or whatever. And, and that's don't do that. And again. it sucks that Tokyo Pop can still keep their stuff. But this is like any publisher can do that. Unless it's yeah. in your contract that yeah. you release it after so long that they can they can if it's contractually made this way, they can do this where you have to pay them back what they, they gave you if you didn't earn out to get your stuff back or what the difference was. That's not unusual. So I, I think I actually, yeah, I remember now. I think I tweeted at her and I'm like, she was subtweeting about yeah, us. I'm like, if you're going to talk about this, could you at least tag us in on the conversation so we can defend ourselves? And then she blocked me. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that's when it was. Yeah, I think that's when that happened. Cause um, you're not blocked. I was well, I probably am now. Cause you just said I wasn't. Um, but yeah, so that's what, but anytime any controversy comes up, especially involving crowdfunding, here she comes. Like I know when the berserker thing was going down. Now I will give her credit when the berserker thing was going down. She said the same thing we said, which was, you know, people were upset. It's like, well, you put this here, it takes away from us. And I th if I remember correctly, she made she made comments too that were like what we had said, which is, well, when you have something like that that's this big, it's bringing all kinds of people in to back it that might not normally come there, and they might stumble upon your project when they might not normally come there to spend money, and and it raises everybody up. And it wasn't necessarily a, a subtractive; it could be an additive thing yeah and yeah. she was saying that as well as we also were saying and i did agree with her that but anytime anything happens she gets herself some some you know blog article she gets her pr person on it yeah so she is like look compared to most indie comics creators she is in a different uh tax bracket for sure you know mm -hmm. i mean she's done what she's done like a bunch on kickstarter like 2.5 million over 30 some or 30 campaigns it's not like and, she did it in one it was like 30 campaigns and they're mostly anthologies so she has to split that money and it's mostly porn and it's mostly porn and so let's be honest here well. I mean, porn's gonna sell i mean i'm not i'm not slamming on it i'm just saying i mean if you want to make money it's a running joke do porn pretty much in comics like porn always sells you know it so, does but you know, we've got this this uh, discussion coming up with Kickstarter. And she was, I mean, she was the biggest cheerleader, one of the biggest cheerleaders for Kickstarter for years. Oh, they had they had her like being on their team or whatever, and interviewing oh, yeah. her all the time because you know because you're so successful like, at the thirty campaigns you've done. Yeah, yeah, and she was. I, I mean, to her credit, she was one of the first comic book creators to use the platform when it first came out uh, back in two thousand nine. Now Kickstarter basically lifted their whole business model. Kickstarter and Patreon lifted their business models from webcomics creators mm -hmm. because webcomics creators before were offering like newsletters, paid podcasters newsletters, were too podcasters, podcasters, any independent content creator. You could subscribe via their website or through PayPal or whatever for the content. You, they were taking pre-orders from, from books through PayPal and all this stuff. So they basically lifted the model that was already out there, but she was one of the first ones to, to use mm -hmm. Kickstarter and, you know, back in the day. So she became kind of the poster child for it. Now she's thrown them completely under the bus. Mm -hmm. Oh, and she, and, and, and the humility about everything. I can't wait to get to the humility part. Um, yeah. And we're going to talk about the situation with Kickstarter. And then, you know, if you stick around, we're also going to talk about Gumroad. Gumroad's another one that was very popular with, with, uh, indie comics creators, but it deals strictly with digital downloads and they're in the shit now too. Because oh, and then Topatico is coming back with uh, you're their crowdfunding platform. So what this is honestly about, and this is, that is what they're crowdfunding. Topatico. Okay. So all these people Topatico, here, here's the thing. Oh this God. is, this is the unified theory of everything. A lot of what you're seeing in comics right now, we keep telling people this and they don't fucking listen to us. A lot of what you're seeing in comics right now are, are you know, it's, it's the people that were in web comics like 10, 15 uh -huh. years ago. You know, and they're in the mainstream now or they're, you know, whatever. And Topatico is one of those things. They were a collective. They basically handled the merchandise, merchandising for, uh, you know, pretty sizable web comics back in the day. And uh, they had like, a, I guess they got a warehouse and they were, you know, you know if you want to do web comics, you wanted to, you know, merch of your stuff, they would handle all that. And all you had to do was just, you know, collect a check. And there are other companies that do that now for like YouTubers and, you know, stuff like that. But, you know, at the time, it was it was a pretty interesting thing. It was invite only. But, yeah, now they're starting their own crowdfunding site. Which what payment processors are they using? What payments are they taking? Are they taking credit cards? If they're taking payment processing and they're using things like anything from a credit card or banking or PayPal or whatever, it's on the blockchain. 
visas. They're getting into it. So uh, it's for people that are so against it and, and, and you know, against PayPal. blockchain, right? Yeah. The, you're, the, the, what they're using is all tied to blockchain, including Spike Trotman's uh, campaign. So now her new thing, which got amazingly all this stuff, like Forbes and Polygon suddenly did articles about her, like right now, because she announced that she's going to do her own project on her own site you know what we've been telling you guys to do and that there's wordpress plugins and there's a shop and shopify yeah, yeah that you could do this on you know we've been telling you for a while well she just invented it <laughs> make and we've been talking about this for like eight months make no mistake the people that are complaining right now about kickstarter and offering alternatives to kickstarter now are salty that they can't control the platform right and that's then, what this is about. But the thing is, we went and looked, right? And her her campaign on her site um, is tied to WordPress. Yeah, she's using... I'm like, what's she using? WordPress. WordPress. Oh. Guess what? Guess what WordPress has as part of and has it has ties to? Oh. Blockchain. Yeah. It oh. doesn't matter if her specific campaign uses a blockchain technology. Uh, WordPress is, you know, has stuff that uses blockchain. They're going so by on, guilt yeah. by association. So even her own campaign that she's so salty about that she has to go start her own thing to show Kickstarter that you have to avoid blockchain because they wouldn't explain it enough to her <laughs> is using WordPress, which is tied to blockchain. Th that's what I don't understand. People are like, oh, we're going to go to an alternative like Zoop or, or some other site. I'm like, I guarantee you, if you're taking PayPal payments, there's a little bit right. of blockchain If involved. you're taking payments that involve credit cards in any way, shape, or form. They're going to be Visa. Here's about our crypto and blockchain. Give them time within, and we've said before, Web3. You don't, and I want to talk about this because Kickstarter never said, I don't think they ever said they're getting into NFTs. They said they were going to go to blockchain. It was a blockchain we, thing to do a basically what she's doing. Yeah, to, to add a, like a Kickstarter plugin to your website. To WordPress, yes. Because it's more secure for transactions and you can take cryptocurrency and whatever. Yes, that's what, that's what, that's what they said. So you do realize like every payment processor within the next, two to five years is going to be on blockchain. Like that's... Well, it doesn't matter. Don't You can't use logic. They're too busy using it as a, as a publicity opportunity for themselves. We're, we're not talking... We're not talking about stupid, you know, $100,000 JPEGs. We're talking like, this is the future of online transactions for everybody. And most banking and credit cards and PayPal are already on it. They're already on it. They're you already just, on it. You didn't know. You're taking PayPal payments for the last two years. We have people pay us through PayPal, and what it does, it takes their their crypto and then converts it to like U.S. dollars, you mm -hmm. know. And we don't even see you that. You don't even have to be using crypto. No. But the thing is, if it's used, you're guilt by association. If Kickstarter is guilty because they're going to use blockchain to offer, and here's the kicker: blockchain to offer their services to people so they can put independently on their sites. It's okay when Spike Troutman does it, um, but Kickstarter is going to offer it. Well, that might give the people that we don't like the opportunity to use that. It's bad. It's bad for the environment. I can't stand with blockchain because it's a bad, bad thing. I'm going to go use WordPress that has ties to blockchain. So yeah, that that's what, and this is all of this. It's not, and again, I don't want to single out Spike Trotman. Well, just because this is brought up today. She singled herself out by using her PR connections to get herself all over the damn place. She's in Forbes. She's and, in and Polygon, Polygon, and she's going to turn up all over the place oh, and she's using gonna, this. And she to, made two point five million. And she likes to brag about that, but she's going to she's going to make a cookbook about poor craft, tell people, poor people how to make it in the cities. Okay, so here's the other thing, and uh, my memory is a little bit foggy, but I remember her doing a podcast with her husband, and if I recall correctly, her husband works in finance. Worked at the time. Or worked in finance at the time. So it was kind of like I always thought it was weird that they're doing a book about uh, how to make it as a starving artist when they probably were not actually making it as a starving. Well, artist. I think it's funny because you know if the, it, it could be true. It could be but true. But that just says that her husband sucks at finance. <laughs> I mean, That's true. It could be before she got married. I don't know. I don't know. No, but, no. It wasn't what she said in the, in the interview. But which I just, is probably gone now. Um, but, well, I want to point out, but I'm, I, I'm going to take a minute because she's so, every time one of these things comes up, she has to have herself in there and make it about her. And the comments she's making on Twitter about her own campaign, can we go there for a minute, are just gloriously funny. Um after the, in retrospect, <laughs> I should have probably mentioned that every time I launched a Kickstarter, it spent at least a few hours. It's the most popular project on the entire site, huh? She's, okay, before I go, you know you can cheat that, right? 
The, a lot of these companies no, that you don't. hired, that people hired to go to Kickstarter, if they use like outside companies to work with them, what they would do is they would spend a bunch of money um, backing the projects. I mean, we were on panels. People bragged about, oh, I spent $10,000 backing my own project to make sure it was popular. And it hit the goal within the first so many hours to make sure it was ranked and popular on the site. You can cheat that. It's really easy. So I'm actually, I'm actually going to name check a company because they're not even doing it anymore. Okay. It was Bread Pig. That was um, one of them. There's other was, ones. There were multiple. And it was, again, like Topatico, um, it was like a collective where they would fulfill Kickstarter mm -hmm. projects. That's literally their business models. They would take a bit off the top and they would fulfill your campaign. So what they would do is they had a really big list of backers from all these, you know, big web comics campaigns and they would just kind of recycle that. But I was also told, can't verify it for a hundred percent, but I was also told that they would add uh, seed money to the campaigns to to hit make them hit goal within twenty four. Well, hours. I can I can verify that I have had several people tell me that they got their own campaigns popular by seeding it themselves, and it's not hard to do. You can totally make it the most popular thing, and in a few hours, mine was the most popular thing on Kickstarter for like two hours. I mean, it's not really that hard to do that. Oh my God, I hit ten thousand dollars with twelve backers. How oh, how did that happen? And especially especially. If it was an earlier Kickstarter, when yeah. there wasn't as much competition, it yeah. was hell easy to do it. So it's like bragging about that doesn't, and then, oh, and then my next thing. And the other thing she was posting was, gee, I wonder why my crowdfunding page crashed. A mystery to be sure, because there's 60,000 requests on it. And I have, okay, as somebody who does websites, and we work on websites, and, and they get a lot of traffic. What this says to me is you have cheap ass hosting if it crashed over 60,000 people on your site. Because we're, we've had months where we've spent over $1,000 on hosting to handle the amount of traffic that hit it because we had far more than that in like a day on the site. And so this just says to me that you have really cheap hosting because your, your site usually doesn't get much traffic. Yeah, we've had days where we were getting like a half a million page views in a day. Mm -hmm. We've and had bills that were like our hosting bill was like thousand plus a month. Oh yeah, we've had, we've, had, we've actually had hosting bills because we're on flexible uh, hosting, but we've actually had hosting bills that were more than our mortgage payment. I was like, holy shit! Yeah, because you know? it got traffic. But when sixty thousand is a bragging point and it crashes your site, yeah. that to me just says that your site doesn't isn't used to getting hardly any traffic. So anyway, let's uh, let's let's talk about this, and then we'll we'll move on to Gumroad. Um, and I will be clear. I mean, the whole purpose of this was not to dunk on Spike Trotman. The whole purpose of this video is that everybody is turning against Kickstarter and Gumroad, and and this is all about control. It's all about no, control. I will dunk on Spike Trotman. I'll tell you why. Because we've been around long enough that every time a controversy comes up, she tries to use it to make it about herself. Which you know, hey, I you know if you can leverage something, by all means, I I get that respect whatever but then to make the comments she made on twitter like you know i'm so special oh my stuff end up in, in the top and, and, and the arrogance amuses me greatly especially when you know that a lot of this stuff is easily cheated a lot especially when you know that it when you put it in context it isn't as big a deal as, as she keeps making out to be and like well she's one of the top creators on kickstarter because in 30 campaigns she got 2.5 million dollars meanwhile there are creators that do more than that or do at, almost that much for one campaign yeah, I mean, look, I'm not trying to uh, uh, belittle it's anyone's... It's arrogance, I guess, yeah. is what makes... It, it annoys me. I mean, Berserker by itself did like a million and a half. Spawn did like three million. I mean, we're talking Todd McFarlane, but we're talking, you know, over on, on uh, Indiegogo, which everybody ignores Indiegogo now. Keep ignoring Indiegogo. For the love of God, keep ignoring Indiegogo. We don't want some of these people coming over to no. Indiegogo. Uh, they've already tried to tank Indiegogo, but now they got bigger things to worry about. But like, uh, you know, Van Skyver, he did, did you know, 1.2 million on one campaign. Mm -hmm. And all of his campaigns, uh, he's probably done, I would guess, four or five million off the top of my head. But Right. And some of these people like Penny Arcade, they've done several Kickstars. I'm sure yeah. if you add it up, they end up with just as much. I want the I want the top. And it's like, No, she not said she really. is the the top. She's not the top. I, um, I find that very hard. Okay, if she is, it's only because she's done more crowdfunders than anybody else, and, and that's the amount of money that she did. I, I find it – I'm sorry. When you do 30 campaigns to equate to that, that doesn't say to me that you're a big earner. Comics? <laughs> Over how many years? Top crowdfunder is leaving Kickstarter. Because top, she said so? She also says 60,000 views crashing her site was a big deal. Comics top crowdfunder. That is a bold – that is a bold – Have you read bold. her Twitter? She's constantly making these comments. Um, there's no, she's not even in the, I mean, she's done well, but she's not in the ballpark 
compared to you know a lot of the more recent campaigns. Like, I, look, I'm so, to, comics top crowdfunder. Well, we're YouTube's top channel. Because we said so. Because we said so. We're YouTube's top channel with the word clownfish in it. We probably aren't even that. Who knows? We're probably not. There's probably like some aquarium channel out there that gets like way more views. <laughs> I probably watch that more than our videos too. And yeah. I'm like, and this, and then, you know, back to this Mike Chapman thing too. Yeah, I'm like, I'm mad because when I talk about hypocrisy, this sums it all up. Okay, so let's talk about this. This is uh, this is um uh the guy asking her Rob uh, Sakovitz. Uh, oh, who cares? Yeah, he did, well he used to write. He he's written for different, but this is on Forbes. This is on Forbes. Why are you making the move now? I want to start off by saying Kickstarter will always be what made Iron. I don't Stars. want to burn that bridge in case I have to crawl back. No, she said she's never coming back. So I'm gonna we're oh, okay. gonna hold you she to that. She says that, that huh? I bear no ill will to the site or the people who made the site what it is, but they recently made a decision to begin investigating blockchain. Investigating, they haven't even moved yet. Investigating blockchain. Blockchain that I want to point out again is tied to WordPress, which she's running her campaign on. That is true. And if she's taking payments from PayPal, she's involved in blockchain. Uh, you are. Um, so how dare you? you? Your righteous ass should just be dropping all of it. You have to. Yeah. And you have to leave Twitter, too. Right. Oh, yeah. You're promoting on Twitter you're like You're promoting crazy. on Twitter. You're promoting the hell out of it on Twitter, which is the, the highly tied to blockchain. I mean, come on. This again, this uh, this isn't even about the blockchain. It's so about. Just be honest. This. It's about this. Well, the I don't think hers is necessarily about this so much as it's about her using this to get attention for herself. Yeah, but it's well in, in Trotman's case, yes. But this whole always does. all this backlash at Kickstarter, I would not be surprised. And I'm gonna speculate here. I would not be surprised if you found out that that uh Camilla Zhang and some of the people that worked with her at Kickstarter, the people that got fired from Kickstarter, are pulling the strings behind the scenes to kick up a bunch of outrage to get their revenge. It wouldn't surprise me. It would not surprise me. That's not all. based on anything we have proof. No, of. no, no, That's no, just no. his opinion. Um, because it's very interesting that all these websites now are like, oh, thank God there's an alternative like Zoop that Camilla Zhang just happens to be uh -huh. working on. Right. Um and, on. and 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 Troutman was uh putting out the, the Patico. She was, you know, tweeting about them before. She was, I believe her comic it was uh, uh Templar, Arizona. And I remember it was it was it was pretty sizable back in the day. But I, th I think she was part of Tabatico like ages ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to mention too, like they're like, hey, first thing we're gonna do is this plushie. And that thing no offense to Patico, but that thing's shit. I mean I'm just saying we actually pay, we actually paid to get a prototype. We never made this Winston. This is from This from, is squishables. It's squishables. Yeah. It was like like they worked with, I know they worked with Squishables because they had like a Dr. McNinja Squishable. We've had and like, we've had like three or four, no, no, four or four or five prototypes we've paid for to be done. They all looked better than whatever that potato is. Yeah. I'm I like, can't even tell it's a potato. It looks like a ducky. I thought it was a rubber ducky. It's like, they're like, oh, this is just a mock-up. We're going to, I'm like, guys, that's not a good, I mean, if I were looking at I this. I wouldn't even post that as a, as a mock-up. I, like... I do sewing and pillows. I wouldn't even have put that as my work. Oh my God. That was like bubbly Steve. We weren't going to, we weren't going to sell bubbly Steve's until we actually had a prototype. And even the prototype was lacking compared to yeah. the final product. Well, then the prototype, the first one, I turned down. We turned them down. Because yeah. I said, I said, it's too small. It's yep. not worth the price they're going to charge nope. for it. And it's not, it's not good enough. And we paid for another one till we got one that was good enough. Anyway, let's go back to this. this uh, we told you this was. We told you this is going to be a long ass video. Uh, while it's increasingly difficult to avoid interacting with that sort of thing online, it's going to be impossible within the next two or three years. Spike, I hate to break it to you. Uh, I do not feel comfortable playing a part in directing literal dollars and actual funding toward that venture when there's very little clarity on how it will be implemented. But they I were will. very clear. But I will spend. I will make sure I direct that money to my bank account using WordPress and their link, which has links to blockchain. And I will take your money via whatever you know, PayPal, pay whatever or funding Visa. you know you're going to pay use to pay it with, um, with your bank, or your credit cards, or your PayPal, which are all tied to blockchain. I, I don't want to throw my support behind something I genuinely don't understand the inspiration. But support no, me when I'm using blockchain. No, you forgot the period. The period's right here. I don't want to throw my support behind something I don't understand. Because it's bad. Because comics says it's because bad. Because if it's comics says it's bad, I can use this opportunity to get attention from my own crowd. That's funder. exactly what. This is what about. she always does. We can use we can use this to get attention for <laughs> Zoop. We can use this to get attention for all these other right. alternatives. This is the only reason we're even mentioning her in this video is because it's a prime example of exactly what we're talking about. 
What is specifically, specifically objectionable to me is the implementation in other places has led to abuse and fraud with what, NFTs? That has nothing to do with what Kickstarter, Kickstarter literally, as I understand it, they're only gonna implement blockchain to handle uh, payment processing and to take crypto. But wait, you're talking about abuse and fraud, but there's there's a lot of campaigns on on, on places like Kickstarter that didn't deliver. That's, that, people have that brought that be, up too. That would be a little bit more worrisome, I would think. Um, yeah, I've interacted with Kickstarter three times, sent emails requesting clarification. I, said, I, I have acted with, interacted with Kickstarter. I asked them to, to have a meeting with me personally. I it's about me. And their top <laughs> crowdfunder. They have to I am telling you, nothing else proves oh my, my point. God. Her own words, her own tweets prove exactly what I am saying. We've been doing what we've been around this scene for a long time. So when we saw the Forbes article someone a friend sent over, we're like, oh, it's like trauma. Okay. Yeah. It was like this oh, explains everything. Surprise. Uh blockchain is morally neutral. Well, no, according to um what was her name yesterday? Uh Nadia, Nadia Samus, I think her name was. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, it's a, it's against minorities. It's, it's it's unethical. Blockchain is unethical and it targets minorities. Which we don't know how, but it's I don't I don't know how. I don't know how that happens. Um, Kickstarter said they will be using some sort of carbon offset against the damage. This new direction potentially could do the environment. I've heard those kinds of plans described as a promise to do an hour on the treadmill for every muffin I eat. Okay, okay right. But you're using uh, blockchain in your WordPress and taking blockchain and crypto-based payment providers as your payments for your campaign... I guess you better go plant some trees there. At least they're planting trees or trying to do something to offset their footprint. What are you doing to offset the footprint you're creating? She's getting some pushback. And what about the Twitter? I mean, you're on Twitter promoting it. You're on but Twitter. Twitter's the devil. NFTs and 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 such and crypto. We did. Uh, How dare you? We talked about another video where Twitter actually has a, a much bigger carbon imprint than. Well, it has a bigger one, but it definitely then. has a. It definitely does not damage all on its own. Yeah, it, it does. It does. It's it's you know you're on your constantly tweeting god the internet and just has a electric huge... cars I, I just quit it to that electric cars are going to save everyone except you have to charge them and if electricity running cryptocurrency is destroying the environment what do you think electric car mandates are going to do she's getting pushback though this is interesting um so this is the interviewer rob here says kickstarter says they deliberately chose the most energy efficient platform over more mainstream options because of this issue if creators in the community who are legitimately concerned about it don't support the good faith efforts of companies to address the environmental issues they've raised, what message does That's that send? That's a valid point. Basically, like, they're doing everything they can do to find a happy medium here. If you yeah. guys are going to jump ship, what kind of message is that? Well, not just that? that. They're going to happy medium because they're trying to make sure they minimize their environmental impact that you have a problem with, yet remain competitive in the market. To exist. I would not actually call what's going on at Kickstarter a good faith attempt. Yeah, because they fired Camilla. I wouldn't call what's going on <laughs> with your own, your, with, with this whole interview and you doing your, you know, all to promote yourself for your own crowdfunder using blockchain technology related properties as a, a good faith attempt either. It boils down to trust me, bro. That, isn't that everybody though? Isn't that, well, you know, um, they're talking about implementation. Implementation and intent are two different things. Right now, we're still at the white paper pie in the sky stage. Well, that's everything right now. But not just that. Trust me, bro. Well, just supposed to take her word for it that she that she talked to Kickstarter and they wouldn't take any message because she that she's the most top you know whatever crowdfunded ever person. Trust me, bro. Well. When you're asking for money on a crowdfunding platform. It's trust me, bro. It's trust me, bro. That's what she's doing right now. Trust me, bro. Trust I'm, me, bro. I'm going to deliver. Trust me, bro. I'm going to give you a comic book when this all said and done. I mean, not saying that she didn't. You know what I'm saying? But that like literally same. is it's everything. I know. Yeah. I know. That's why the reason we're mentioning this because the, it, it's 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 just okay. a prime example of what we're talking this about. This is this is what it's about. You also have your own brand to maintain. Do the attitudes of the fan base that support your work play into this? You mean Twitter and Tumblr? Are they negative? Extremely negative is what Trotman says. It's the best way I can put it. I've actually joked with my friends if Kickstarter rolled out the world's okay, this is telling. They're not going to be forgiven. I've actually joked with my friends if Kickstarter rolled out the world's greatest plan that would get us all what we always wanted forever, even if I came out of there knowing that, I could still not run a Kickstarter at this point because too much damage has been done. But I can run it on blockchain-related <sighs> WordPress. I know, right? There are too many people who have made it clear they're no longer interested in interfacing with Kickstarter if they take this direction. Why do they keep picking on Kickstarter, though? You notice what I'm saying? It's like all these other companies. Uh -huh. all, I, I know. I know. I, it was a, it was it was a question to prove your point. You have to ask yourself: 
Why is it specifically Kickstarter they keep having a problem with? Why aren't they talking? She was promoting Topatico yeah. and everything else, and which Topatico is probably going to take payments from people who use blockchain technology. Yes. So I'm just saying they're 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 being very virtuous with what you know with certain things and overlooking others. Because this is what happened. Kickstarter took a scalp. Kickstarter got rid of their their gatekeepers, and this is. This is payback. This, you know, I don't know. I, I don't personally have the people. In, I don't have the people at Kickstarter that'll give me whatever I want whenever I call I, them. I'm not going to get uh, my project favorited anymore because my buddies aren't there anymore. So I'm oh, just going to say it's. I want to point out that too. If we've done, we know this for a fact. If somebody at Kickstarter likes you and likes your project or has your back, you'll get boosted. You'll get be one of the, po the the popular projects of the day or of the month or whatever on Kickstarter. They will totally boost you, and I know this because someone did it for us once. Yeah, yeah, that's how it works. And this was back in the day, way back. It, Way to, back they, in the day. they, you can, you, if you have, if you can call up Kickstarter and then talk to your friends. They can boost you. They can do whatever. But now when she calls up Kickstarter, they're not returning her calls. Yeah, because you know what? In the grand scheme of things, like you were saying, comic book projects do not bring in a lot of revenue uh, compared to tech projects, compared to movies, Maybe compared it's to not tabletop. Worth their, you're not worth the aggravation. I think that's what this is. I think it was the same with uh, Camilla Zhang. I think they're like, yeah, we have upended our platform to please these whiny ass comic book creators and they're not even bringing that much money to the platform. I mean, most of them don't. I mean, you Spike know? Chapman does bring 2.5 million, you know, with th 30 that's campaigns. Yeah, but that's uh, still, but still respectable. Not, I mean, that's I'm not, respectable. I'm no way saying she never doesn't bring money and she doesn't have a platform. That is not what I am saying. What I am saying is there's a big double standard here. And this is, for, for they're saying uh, on one side of their face, they're mad about this and they always focus on Kickstarter. But then in another way, um, at the other side, they're going to go back other things that are just as, re they're related to the blockchain as well. And maybe not making as many efforts as Kickstarter claims they're making. But it's okay because, you know, they already made the big mouthpiece statement about Kickstarter, which is what the point is. <laughs> God, this gets better. I want to drive home that I am a very special case, and nobody who's running a Kickstarter after this point should be harassed or defamed or condemned for staying on the site. I've had a decade plus to build a reputation and an audience. There are people who just automatically insta-buy everything I put on Kickstarter. Oh, I this woman has- Holy the, shit, I told shit, you! The arrogance. She is, she's always like this. They're like, why are you picking up poor Spike Trout? This is why. This woman goes around every time there's even a, a little bit of controversy. She finds some way to make it about herself. And then she's so up her own ass. She's literally wearing herself as a hat. It's ridiculous. God. Uh, she believes they're going to take a hit. They probably will. But, you know, again, if you have a mailing list, and this is how it was done back in the day. You know, I mean, it, it just. Well, she does. She brags about it. I haven't even put out my 50,000 plus mailing list. I'm sure she has that. I, I honestly, after 30 campaigns, not much money expected it to be a lot larger. Yeah, but I mean, I'm sure she, I and mean, this is, you know, how it works, and this is how, this is old school. This is kind of how it worked. You um, also can buy those, by the way. Well, yeah, true. But, you know, I mean, I know she had a lot of backers. So Kickstarter has contributed to your success, but you've contributed to their success, <laughs> kind of, not only to their company, but to the creative community they've tried to foster. Right. You Probably know. hundreds of projects that were discovered by people who came to Kickstarter because they know your work. Are you concerned about the effect that your exit will have on that creator ecosystem? They're trying to be nice. They're trying to they're trying to to kiss her ass and play to her ego to to basically call them out, or call her out is what they're trying to do. I was a very vocal Kickstarter cheerleader for years because they were absolutely worthy of that. I think they were transformative of the comic small press. They they were. I agree with that. I agree with that. Uh, it was so vibrant and interesting. Now, a fissure has opened up. It opened up before this. It opened up when they decided they were going to start gatekeeping. Yes. who couldn't couldn't. Put it's just a fissure on. for you. It's like, now when, it's a problem for you. When, yeah, yeah it's exactly. Fine when other when people the giant ass listen. crack appeared and you you kicked everybody else into it, that's okay. But now that it's impacting you and the fissure's a problem for you, it matters. This low key sounds like a threat. There's time for them to walk it back. But even if they do, you're never going back. You said so. You're not allowed to. You know what will happen, right? They'll they'll come out with this in a couple of years, they'll come out with this blockchain plugin, and she'll run that blockchain plugin on her website. And just pretend that everybody forgot about this. But she's already running a plugin to <laughs> run her, her campaign that uses blockchain. I know, or is tied I know, to blockchain. I know, I know, I know, I know. 
I have to strike out my own. I, I, I don't think, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, you didn't read the whole thing. But I don't think that's going to happen. It's with a heavy heart that I have to strike out on my own. Exactly. But you already said, even if they did, even if they change it tomorrow, you're never going back. You said so. It's in writing. It's on this video, immortalized forever. You know, I'm out leaving Kickstarter and making a big deal about it and going yes, you to, are. to you mul see. multiple fucking publications <laughs> with my PR guy, girl, whoever. I'm not making a big deal about it at all. On Twitter, constantly bad. She's constantly making a big deal about it. You know, I want, I want them to know, like, they still have time. They still have time to repent. They don't give a shit. There are other people that are bringing in more money and they booted their asses off the platform. Right. Like, they don't give a shit. Comics to them, at this point, if I were Kickstarter, if I were Kickstarter, I'd look at this and be like, why is it that the comic book people, of all the all the uh, verticals we have here on Kickstarter, why the fuck are the comic book people trying to dictate everything when they bring in, like, 5% of the revenue? Right, to everybody. And the thing is, they don't care, because, yeah, you did $2.5 million, which is impressive, and I'm not, I'm not belittling that. But over 30 campaigns in how many years? When you break it down, it's really not a big deal to Kickstarter. Oh, God. Oh, why? I wish I knew the answer to why they're doing this. They're not the scrappy little startup Because they're trying anymore. to stay competitive? They need to stay competitive. Because and everything's going that way? Yeah, because everybody can do it on their own, you know? They're established. They've made the decisions. That I don't necessarily understand the motivation behind it. I wish I was in the boardroom when well, this decision well, was made. Well, you should have called your contact because, you know, you're Call you and you're so important. I wish Camilla was there so she could tell me what was going on. The saddest part about all this to me is it feels like they're no longer interested in the input of their user base. They're interested in making money. They realized that people like Camilla were actually costing them money. I mean, it's as simple as that. They have, you know, yeah, their public benefits corp. And I think the main site is always going to be that. But this other thing they're doing, they're going to pimp out their technology. They're going to make more money because they're going to offer it to people. And then people can take it on their own and do it on their own. Absolutely. They get a cut of everything and they don't have to hire additional people right. or anything. And they can just be like, well, we allow on our websites what we allow on our website. But, you know, fuck it. If you want to go do something Nazi porn on your own site, I don't give a shit. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I just, just like, I we just, don't care. I just, I just, I have to laugh because this whole thing, like, you're like, you're picking on her. It's like, I'm not picking on her. She, yeah, I kind of am, I guess, because I'm so tired of her, one, being, the, she's so arrogant all the time. Every time one of these things come up, she has to be in there making it about her. And then she's, the, the, the hypocrisy is just off the charts funny to me. It's just flipping hilarious because you know i'm turning against them go back my my campaign because you know they're doing such horrible things to the environment go back my campaign now my website with wordpress tied to blockchain but now back me you know it's just i'm just like I, the, the, this is so her it's it, this it's is so opportunistic on, this is on brand for her yeah this is opportunistic just like zoop just like tapatico it's opportunistic right um can we not read any more of this shit it well, just no. makes me it just kickstarter responded okay go ahead they responded to Forbes. Uh, their senior director of communications, Kate uh, Burnick, Burnick, issued the following statement. We should have told the story of why we're supporting a decentralized protocol better. You guys did explain it. They, I, I thought it was pretty clear. And it's on us to make it clear how this will benefit creators in the future. Spike Trotman is an incredible force in the independent comics world uh, whose work we deeply respect. We're not going to throw her the bus. No, we're honored to have played a role so many of the books and projects that she's brought no one would know she was if she yeah. hadn't done it. Why isn't she working with a mainstream publisher? Mm -hmm. Oh, because it's porn. Over the past decade, we wish her tremendous success. Uh, we take our responsibility to creators like Spike very seriously. And though we're in the very early days of this new direction, we're committed to being thoughtful and transparent and involving our community much more directly as plans take We're doing it anyway. Thanks, but yes. we're Because they're going to make so yeah, much... Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's her. Whatever. Pat, pat. We're doing uh, it anyway. I am sure she's her with them. I mean, if she's billing herself as their top creator... That this is like, I mean, seriously, top crowdfunder. No. And, and, and I made 2.5 million, but buy my poor craft cookbook. <laughs> I'm going to show you poor people how to cook. Oh my God. Okay. Anyway, moving on from Kickstarter. And I, again, I, I'm just going to reiterate for the umpteenth time. This has nothing to do with blockchain. It might have a little bit to do with blockchain, but mostly it's about... They're going to say it's blockchain, but that's bullshit. They've lost control of Kickstarter. And, and Eddie, that's and, and what this is about. actions prove that this is not about blockchain. Yes. Yes. Because they're using... They have no problem using it when it benefits them. Absolutely. So let's, let's, talk, about, let's talk about this. Gumroad... 
Um, Gumroad, which is is a uh, uh, it's been around for know, about 10, 12 years now. Mm. I think that I that I've been aware of it, but they sell a lot of PDFs, digital downloads, um, that sort of thing. They're getting canceled too because they were thinking about think they weren't doing. They were just thinking about doing NFTs. And uh, there was a tweet put out there yesterday. They said no plans. Still no plans. Still no plans. But now we've got people being like, well, we've got screenshots forever of of this shit. So um, this is actually, uh, ironically, since we're talking about tobacco, this is uh, Jeff Jocks, who's uh, questionable content, Mm -hmm. questionable content guys. Like, yeah, there's screenshots out here. I'm like, if I were a company like this, yeah, I would just put out like announcements like, hey, so-and-so is available on our platform, whatever. And I wouldn't. I wouldn't get into it with creators as the brand because shit's going to happen. And we know from firsthand experience, secondhand, thirdhand, fourthhand experience that every damn thing, every interaction that you have with independent comic book creators is going to be screenshotted Mm -hmm. and archived someplace. And they're going to use it against you at the worst possible Mm -hmm. time. The worst possible time. So... Yeah, there are screenshots out here. What is going on? Basically, they got into it with uh, Box Brown, as I understand it, who is an indie comics creator. Oh, so who? Yeah, well, yeah. And um, I guess they want him to work on some uh, NFT projects. Okay. And he didn't want to, so he quit. And then he was going around, I believe, telling people that he got fired. I don't know. And then there was this big blowout. Now, all of a sudden, everybody's like, fuck you, Gumroad NFTs. Now, like, go to coffee instead. But coffee won't let you put porn on it. But coffee doesn't do jack shit. I'm just going to be honest. I don't think Gumroad really does either. I mean. Not really. But Gumroad, I would put Gumroad over coffee. So now we have blue check. Hey, we're, we're, you know, uh, getting out of the situation because they have, look, I I mean, I will say they probably shouldn't have, I guess, say, you know, broken character and and engaged in a messy situation on Twitter. They probably shouldn't have. That was dumb. You know, um, I don't know how many people are actually involved at this company, but, you know. It was not smart. No. And uh, look, this is, this is the, the reality. Anytime you deal with independent comic book people. Especially nuts on Twitter. You know, and I'm not saying I don't know Box Brown. I have no idea. I'm not saying him. I'm yeah. just saying people on Twitter in general. The, 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 the really extremist ones. Yeah, and there were there were people yesterday I saw. They're like, um, you know, fuck you, Gumroad. We've got screenshots. We've been talking about it. You know, uh, this this person here. I didn't like Gumroad in their defensive NFT post, which openly insulted concerned users. I'll let them know. Then they lied about me being a registered user at their app. Um, okay. It's like, yeah, your social media presence ranks among some of the worst I've ever seen. According to your bio's email address, you already have never used Gumroad, never going to. Oh my god, I don't know. This uh, they, shouldn't the, the, they shouldn't have engaged. They shouldn't have engaged. But the end of the day, engaged. it's just because they 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 were looking into it, and that was enough to initially cause the issue. And then they they made their own problem, though. To be fair, Gumroad that, made that their compl- own issues. That is completely true. I um, think They did that to themselves. They sh- could have put a statement out there like, hey, we're... Because th- they put a statement out that they were thinking about doing NFTs, um, and then it just blew up into this whole thing. Right, but they Box didn't Brown help and... their situation no, any. They, no, they, they made their their bed on that. Yeah, if, they're, if you're a software company and whatever, you put your statement out there, uh, and I get that people are going to irritate you. And I, I work for a software company. Like, I mean, they're, t- they're, hell, we'd get people write us, call us, and we get people trying to bait us now. Yeah. And that's, that's what the game is. You don't play the game. They're trying to get you to say something stupid so they can take a screenshot, save that's okay. it. For two we years. take screenshots, all the stupid stuff they say too. So, you know, it works both ways. Screenshots, print out. Some of them mm-hmm. go in a folder. Some of them go to authorities some just about, in yeah, case. Some of them are in a folder with the authorities. Some of them are in a folder with the authorities um, just in case. Just but, you know, case. anyway, the point of all of this wasn't to, like, pick on specific people so much as it was to be, like, if you're out there and you're on Twitter and you're you're on Twitter especially and you're going on and on and on about how you shouldn't use Kickstarter, you shouldn't use this because of blockchain, stop for a moment and realize that if you're, one, on Twitter going on about it or using Twitter to promote yourself in any way, you're already using, you know, places that support crypto, NFTs, blockchain. If you're doing campaigns and you're doing your own thing and you're using other services, look into those services because they themselves might be connected to blockchain technology, crypto, yeah. and NFTs. And if you and, and even beyond that, if you're taking payments for everything, understand that most banks, credit cards, and places like PayPal are now associated with blockchain technology and crypto. So 
you're going to have to check your hypocrisy because you, you can't sit there and say you can't do this because it's bad and it's so terrible while supporting other things that benefit you that, that, that are associated with the exact same damn thing. And I don't care who you are, who you think, how big you think you are. You know, I think what's going to be really interesting about this is this is not the way I This is thought, not the way. <laughs> this is this is not the way I thought the the comic book scene would burn itself down because everybody was No, I didn't see this coming at all. Everybody was running to crowdfunding. Everybody was like, "Oh my god, the mainstream industry is burning down. There are fewer books. Uh, page rates are abysmal. Uh publishers are closing shop. Quick, everybody, run to Kickstarter." And within less than a year, now Kickstarter has become this this no good nick place you're not allowed to go to. But what's funny to me is the people that are yelling about it the most are a very small percentage of the people. Most people don't even know about this shit, nor do they care about this shit. And they're just going to go to Kickstarter and they're going to go to PayPal and they're going to go to the same places anyway. Well, that's the thing. And and here, you know, normies don't pay attention to this. Stuff. No, they don't even know what you're doing. You're just pandering to your audience. That's it. All you're doing at this point is hurting yourself. Yeah. You're hurting yourself. And you want or to. Or you're hurting your reputation when you're being a hypocrite. Or you're hurting, you know, all those marginalized creators, you, you know. Claim, oh, because like of blockchain? Because of blockchain <laughs> yeah. that you, you claim to. Of, you, yeah, crypto. Yeah, you're basically telling them, well, you can't go do, uh, go golly, guys, I don't know what you're going to do for comics. I mean, there's this great platform out there. There are a couple of different alternatives, but they're all on blockchain. In some way or connected to it in some way. And, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, what are we going to do? Like, you know, we talked about Rankin Bass before with Jack Frost, where they're making, was it the. The Kaputniks or they're oh, making yeah. ice money and icicle money. And I'm like, that's what you have to do. Like, you're going to have to make your own currency, I guess. You're going to have to have your own, like, whole system yourself. And nobody wants to learn the code. So. And this is a small percentage <laughs> of people that are having a I know, right? Because like, in the grand scheme shit. of the world, most people don't, aren't, don't give a shit. They're just like. But it's, I mean, look at the, dom look at how the dominoes are falling. It's not just. Kickstarter. It's like they are, they've got their torches and their pitchforks and they're going out and they're finding every comics platform that has anything to do with NFTs or blockchain. But what's funny to me is meanwhile, Hollywood, they're, they're, they're doubling, tripling down on it. And, you know, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens because if Hollywood um, is doubling, tripling down on it and, and, and they're promoting it to the mass, to the, to the masses, people are going to listen to them if they listen to some people on Twitter. And they're on Twitter complaining about it. I know, it. I know. Twitter, <laughs> Twitter, they're on Twitter attacking companies for for even thinking about NFTs and blockchain. And promoting their 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 campaigns using stuff related to blockchain on Twitter. And Twitter has gone all in on that technology. The platform you're using is using that technology. Do you not fucking see but how they, do, they don't care ones? because it's not about that. It it's absolutely never about that. You're killing trees every time you tweet. Right. No, right. this is about control. But their that, tweets are more important than trees. Everybody else's aren't. That's exactly what this is about. This is about control. It's about um, comic book pros losing their shit. They can't control the flow of spice anymore. And they're they're burning down every company that doesn't toe No, the line. no, they're not burning them down. That's the thing. They They think they are. But they're, they're not. attempting. They're attempting, attempting to. to. It's not doing jack shit. It's not. It no. really isn't. And all the competitors that are popping up trying to leverage this um, for their own personal gain and for their own publicity are you. If you look into what their payment processing and they're probably the way the things they're using to run their campaigns, it's going to be tied to the exact same things that they're complaining about. What is going to happen? And when people see this right now, like you might have had, you know, people might have been uh, a little more sympathetic a year or so ago. But when they see people turning on Brie Larson over NFTs and they see people, you know, who fought tooth and nail to keep certain kinds of people off of their Kickstarter. And now mm -hmm. they're, they're telling Kickstarter. It's like what outsiders are going to see is like, God, there's no pleasing these people. Like there's no pleasing these people. So let's not even try. Right. More room for everybody else. More room for everybody else. And you guys are basically going to blow yourselves up like a freaking Disney villain. Like you're going to kill yourself trying to kill the good guy in the movie. You're gonna wind up falling off a building or falling mm. into the fireplace or some shit like that. And it's kind of hilarious. Cause you are. You're gonna you're gonna cut off every opportunity to make money that there is to to do your own and what's gonna happen is the people who 
uh, aren't averse to this technology, they're gonna make shit tons of money and you're gonna be like, what the hell happened? You mm -hmm. know? And then you're gonna cry racism and whatever. And there I you hope, are. Yeah, I hope somebody comes back and says, no, here's exactly the point where you guys failed because you had opportunities and you turned your nose up to them and now you're living in a stinky, stinky, smelly hippie commune instead of the well, penthouse. Some people like that though, so. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, we gotta wrap this yeah, up. Yes, so we could have wrapped it up a while ago. We could have, but it wouldn't have been as fun. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk to you later. Yep, I bet I'm blocked from her now. I'm sure you are. <laughs>